yo what's up everybody this is mr nixon uh, just down here chilling well not really chilling i'm actually here in my office across the hall from the lab just got done with um, my own research because like i've told some of you earlier i'm actually in school as well so down here knocking out some stuff on that happy friday afternoon Yo, check this out. So I was thinking about the fact that you guys are going over the immunity chapter. And this morning, I had this weird thought. I was thinking about the first time that I had ever heard of Wu-Tang Clan. All right. So the first time I had ever heard of Wu-Tang Clan, this guy, um, he let me listen to this song on a mixtape. And... I was listening to all these different rappers and I, I I mean I lost count of how many people were rapping. I was like, yo, this junk is tight and they're they're mixing stuff about kung fu and ninjas and weapons and their rap styles and what they'll do to you and and uh I said, man, I said they're, they're, each song you let me listen to, there's all these different rappers and they're all adding their own piece to it. Um can you just let me listen to one rapper? And he said, well, I got one more mixtape that has like one rapper on it uh, from Wu-Tang Clan. You can listen to him. And his name is Method Man. So I'm listening to Method Man. And the song that he did was M-E-T-H-O-D, man. And I was like, yo, this joke is hot. My man is spelling his name and it's, he's dropping bombs. Oh, my gosh. So I'm listening to this. And uh, from then on out, I became like this secret underground Wu-Tang Clan fan um, walking around with this uh, with this mixtape that I was hiding from my parents. <laughs> and and it was crazy because you had Inspector Deck, Genius, uh, Raekwon the Chef, RZA, Ghostface Killer, Method Man, ODB, You God. All these guys were rapping together and they, they had their own individual flavor. But put together, they made this unstoppable, indestructible, triumphant unit. And that's what the immune system is. The immune system is a bunch of cells and chemicals that individually in their own rights have these magical abilities. But when you put them together, they're making an entire system, a, a systemic process that happens to keep you and I alive. And you have to understand that without these defenses, we wouldn't live, you know, for maybe about 24 hours and then you die. That's just how important your immune system is. So when you're tackling this chapter, there's some things you got to keep in mind that there are all these individual parts, but they're magically put together so that they function as one. So um, two things you want to you want to keep in mind is there's non-specific defenses and then there's specific defenses. Non-specific defenses don't have a memory. They can't remember anything. I mean, they can. some of them can attack. A lot of it is uh, defending. Uh, they protect you like barriers and walls. Um, another thing about non-specific defenses is that they attack and they defend the exact same way every time, no matter what the pathogen is. So mucus is a non-specific defense. Mucus is going to defend the same way every time. Mucus is not going to defend differently against a virus than versus a protozoa. It's, it's going to defend the same way. Um, um, you got things like uh, complements, you know, complement proteins. These complement proteins, they're going to just bind. They, they bind to attachment sites and then they signal uh, uh, antibodies to help destroy things like bacteria. The thing about it is complements are going to happen the same way. You read about two different pathways that they use. Those pathways don't really change much. I mean, they're, they're the same over and over again. Um, inflammation. Inflammation happens the same way every time. As a matter of fact, sometimes inflammation is frustrating because inflammation will happen primarily because of two things, uh, trauma or infection. So uh, you either twisted your ankle or you scratched yourself, you know, you sprained something, inflammation happened because of trauma, tissue damage, or it could be an infection where you got a cut, it opened up and then an infectious agent got into it, your body responded. For example, I just finished, I'm, I'm taking this medication for my hand, my hand looks all happy and normal now, but uh, four days ago my hand was completely swollen, 
had all these marks and swellings all over it because my hand got in contact with some kind of ivy or something. And so my immune system responded. Uh, I had an allergic reaction, and inflammation was one of those responses. The inflammation could care less than the fact that I was pulling this ivy around my own yard while working in my gardens and stuff. It didn't care. It was like, yo, I'm going to respond the same way against that as if I was going to respond against some type of poisonous spider. So inflammation, that's another one. Another one is fever. Fever doesn't care what it is. Once those pyrogens, those chemicals, pyrogens are released, they stimulate your uh, the thermal regulatory center in your hypothalamus to crank up your body heat. And this is an attempt to either slow or kill whatever pathogen uh, that happens to be in your body. The body already understands that a higher temperature can actually reduce the activity of a pathogenic agent, therefore giving your immune system enough time to actually do something about the drama that's occurring. Um, that's the crazy thing about uh, that's the crazy thing about temperature. Like in in my lab when I used to do some, uh, I'll, I'll be running some trials in a few months. But back when I was running um, some other trials on some other bacteria, I used to grow bacteria at body temperature. That's why I used to incubate stuff and, and grow a lot of microorganisms that I grow them at body temperature, and they love the body temperature. So. If you've got all these bad bugs out there that love to grow at body temperature, it makes sense that your body will want to try to increase that temperature to get rid of those microorganisms. So those are just some examples of um, nonspecific defenses. They, are, they, they act the same way every time. They don't do anything different. They are same in, same out. They don't care what the pathogen is, and they don't have a memory. So when they encounter the same pathogen again tomorrow, guess what? They're going to respond the same way. I've got to go out in my backyard this weekend. i got a bunch of grass i got to cut. Here's the problem. When I get out there, i got to make sure I've got on pants, socks, shoes, and I've got gloves on because I really don't know which ivy or what, my, what it was exactly that my hand came into contact with. But if I come into contact with it again, Guess what my body's going to do? Inflammation. Because it doesn't say, oh, but this is Julian's yard. It's okay. It's all good. It's not something bad. It doesn't care. It's going to respond the exact same way over and over and over again. Now, specific defenses, this is how you get actual immunity. This is how your body gains the ability to, to, uh, to have a, def a preset defense against a specific pathogen, against a specific bad thing. So with specific defenses, you have to understand something. I can't, my specific defenses cannot give me immunity unless my body is actually exposed to the pathogen, that specific antigen. For example, the flu shot. The whole reason why we give people the flu shot is not so that you don't get the flu. You can get the flu shot today. Let's see what's today is Friday. You get the flu shot today and have the flu on Sunday afternoon. I mean, it, it's, it's nothing. The flu shot doesn't keep you from getting the flu. You have to get that out of your mind. What it's doing is this. When we give you the flu shot, we're exposing your body to a number of different influenza strains. Um, these strains expose your specific um, immunity or your specific immune uh, division. It exposes those cells, those T cells, those B cells. It exposes them to those antigens and that process which ends with your B cells creating antibodies and therefore allowing those lymphocytes to create a memory of those specific pathogens so that when you encounter those strains again, which you will because they're probably airborne and you're going to breathe them in. When you encounter those strains again, you already have defenses established for that specific pathogen. And so your body doesn't have to go through that whole same process for the same length of time. As a matter of fact, Thanks to your specific defenses, every time you're exposed to a particular pathogen, your response time gets quicker and quicker and shorter and shorter. 
which is why you get the flu shot. So you don't don't go in getting the flu shot and then you get the flu that year and you're all mad and angry and like, oh, this junk don't work. And, and you say, you know, the flu shot doesn't work. No, it, it just doesn't work the way you thought that it worked. It, it works in an entirely different way. So go into the immune system with this in mind. Um, there's a flow to everything. There's a process. Um, you have to learn the process. You also have to keep another thing in mind. And I, I was trying to keep this video short to like 10 minutes, but I was blabbering at the beginning. So that's my bad. Another thing you need to remember about the immune system and how it functions is that um, it's going to change its steps based on the type of pathogen that is being attacked. So, uh, for example, the influenza virus, um, that virus out in the body fluids can't hurt anybody. It, it's, it's not going to hurt anybody just in the body fluids. It, it has no chance. It has no defenses. It's got no way to attack. The way that a virus like that does its damage is that virus gets inside of your body cells. So it, it makes its way into a body cell. And then once it gets into a body, once it gets into that body cell, what it's, what it's trying to do is it's trying to download its RNA into that cell, therefore forcing that cell to use its intercellular structures, its organelles, to take that viral RNA and then start building out numerous new viri. It's, it's, it's like the ultimate zombie movie. If, if like a zombie, instead of the zombies all eating you or biting you and turning you into a zombie, Instead, if that one zombie bit somebody and downloaded its RNA into that person and then that person became pregnant and then just started popping out baby zombies, like by the hundreds, and that's how they multiplied, you know, that now that would make for a really freaky horror movie. But that's if, you, if that kind of like messed you up a little bit, then that's you got the right idea about how a virus can replicate itself. So to destroy a virus, we kind of got to go about it a different way. And when we find a cell that's been infected by a virus, we know we have to destroy the actual cell to destroy the virus and destroy any vir viri inside of it and any uh, viral proteins and any structures inside there that would lead to the replication of more viruses. Um, with the bacterium, most bacterium that you talk about in the body, or at least in, in basic classes like this one, uh, the bacteria are, are usually too big to be inside of a cell, usually. So these bacteria are probably in the body fluids, probably in the tissues, doing their dirt, doing the nasty, you know, uh, eating the same things that your cells would have been using for themselves and then replicating. So you go about dealing with the bacteria in an entirely different way. You can do a little more hand-to-hand -hand combat with these guys rather than what you would do with viruses. So um, hopefully with that train of thought, you know, go into it thinking that way. You got any specific questions, just let me know and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Deuces.